So this is a bit of a close one to to my heart, and I know to Nick's heart as well. Cole McGrath, uh, the hero from the infamous franchise, and one of your favorite all-time heroes, right? You got to reverse. What? Cole's my, from one of my favorite franchises. That's what I said. That's Cole what McGrath. you said. You said Cole McGrath and... Oh. No. Oh, I thought you said, and as in you were referring to, and one of your all-time favorite heroes, no, Alex no, 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 Cole uh, McGrath yeah, yeah, yeah. from the Infamous franchise, one of your favorite protagonists. Yes, yes. Nick's and brain is not online. <laughs> I just, it's, it processed that sentence differently than it was intended. It's to be. it's okay. okay. Yeah, it's all right. I'm sorry, but yeah, it's okay. Infamous is one uh, of his I was stories. waiting for him to say Alex Mercer, and I was like, <coughs> no, actually, I'm Cole. You know. I, no, no. I really he, played the prototype you, games. No, you are a huge Cole McGrath fan. Yeah. I'm You're a bigger a fan of um, I forgot his name from Second Son. Yeah, but like Second Son's my favorite, but Cole's still cool. So, and for me, Alex Mercer, I played through the first prototype game all the way. I think I actually 100 percent of the game. I love that game and just like how gritty and how just like brutal the combat is. It's so freaking good, but. Cole McGrath and what he's capable of in Infamous. I, I mean, I'll say this. Infamous is the overall better game. I'm not going to even deny that. But Alex Mercer and just everything that he goes through in his journey in the first prototype game. Second one, I I played a little bit of it, and I was like, it's this is all right, but it's not. it's just not the same as the first. The one place that I'm wondering about is, is like obviously not playing the prototype games. I don't know how far things go, like in terms of the power ceiling. Oh, pretty far. But if you've played Infamous 2 at all, then you know that there's a potential thing that kind of makes me wonder if this might even be a fair fight because... Cole's really like comic book superhero esque in certain ways, including where he actually ends up in terms of power if things go a certain way. No, and that's fair. I mean, and Alex is also very powerful in his own right, uh, to the point where he basically is just. Uh, I'll say this: he's basically a walking plague by the end of it, and he basically anyone or anything that he wants destroyed. He basically can just like will it out and boom. Basically, he the power that he gets comes from comes from just like an infection that basically just goes haywire. Hmm. And his DNA with his DNA he evolves in a different way than everyone else. Everyone else becomes, you know, a shambling husk or a bioweapon, but instead him he not only becomes a bioweapon, but he becomes a sentient bioweapon that literally learns, like, through his abilities, all he has to do is imagine what he wants, and he gets it. For instance, like, if he wants, like, his fist to be covered in, like, uh, like bionic steel, then or, like, bio, like just, like, biomass steel, then just... And then next thing you know, he can punch through walls... Uh, if he wants a blade that can cut through uh, anything, then just next thing you know, he's got whatever he wants. Hmm. And Cole, I know Cole's predominant uh, power strain comes from like electricity. Mm -hmm. That's his predominant one. But electricity is a hell of a thing, and it's it and beats like uh, unless I'm misremembering, then there is a potentiality for Cole to become pretty close to like a demigod with it. Yeah. And that makes it interesting for me because, like, where both of them go, I'm wondering how that's going to mesh and who's going to have the the superior uh, the superior like uh, build. But I I'm a fan of both. I've I played both games. I I beat Prototype and I 100 percented it. Infamous, I never got a chance to fully finish it, but I know what happens because I watched my friend play through all of Infamous and all of Infamous too. So. I only yeah. got to watch Andrew play some of the prototype and prototype two, but not enough to really get a good 
idea of, like what they are like overall you know i just knew everybody said they were kind of in a similar vein as infamous they are like, and really close to the same time coincidentally and that's why i really love this death battle that's why i've really been looking forward to this one and yes we were delayed in getting to this one sorry there was a lot going on early this week that we had to get out of the way before we uh before we were able to react to this but here we are so Kate is completely in the no, dark I'm just about trying to, both like, of these characters. Yeah. Kate is completely in the dark. I'm going to wait to see their explanation and the comparison that they do and then make my decision before the death battle. I think we so. should let you decide first so they can see what the person who's going entirely just off of what yes. you hear in this video thinks before we give our decisions and why, why we think them. Yeah. So, so, I honestly have no clue. I think never the, heard anything about these people. I think that's the beautiful so, point. The beautiful part of it, Kate, is that so, that's the thing. Is like I'm an unbiased person. Exactly. It's a decent way to introduce you to a couple of interesting, underrated to an extent games that we may not have time <clears> to show you otherwise. So. Well, the problem with Infamous is that it was a launch for it was one of, it was a close to launch title. For PS3, when PS3 was on the lower, like the lower end of like everyone's list of like what to get, Prototype is a little bit more famous, but it was overshadowed by Halo, overshadowed by just like all of the big games that came out on Xbox. You know, Halo, Call of Duty, all mm -hmm. of those outshone Prototype, and that's why both of them are underrated. I and, gotcha. Yeah, but I want to see this. Let's get into it. Here we go. Cole McGrath, the patron saint of infamous. Alex Mercer, the black light virus prototype from Prototype. He looks cool. Yeah. You voted for it, so we're finally Al Alex is very edge lord. By the way, the reason I love these games when they came out is because these were basically well, infamous, especially. It was basically the first superhero comic book game that was really, really fucking good in open world before the new, like, Batman games and then Spider-Man game came out. Yeah, like, it was right it. before Arkham came out. Mm -hmm. And the, for me, the only one I can think of that came before this, it wasn't fully open world, but it had segments that was very wide open. Incredible Hulk, uh, I, and I, Ultimate Destruction. Hmm. That one is so good. But yeah, you're right about these. You know, the open world, traversing the city and everything. Yeah. Spider-Man 2 is another one as well. You I know, think they set the groundwork for the really good superhero games we've had since then. Oh yeah, definitely. And these two both had a hand in it. Look what I found in the trash! An old script we wrote for this very matchup way back in 2013! <laughs> Wait, we haven't oh, had trash in 10 years? He's whiz and I'm Boomstick! And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Tony McGuire is not the only superhero who's had to learn that lesson. Cole McGrath, oh, my back. your average delivery boy in Empire City, until one day he opened a package that exploded in his face. This was the Ray Sphere, a device that, upon erupting, destroyed much of the city and tore through Cole at the atomic level, killing hmm. him instantly. Nah, actually, he scooped up some superpowers. Cool, zippity zappity superpowers. More specifically, Cole became a conduit. One of so they're focusing, focusing on canonically good... Which I do not believe allows him to achieve the demigod state that I'm thinking of. Supernatural abilities from the Ray Sphere explosion. Which also turned Empire City into a godforsaken hellscape. This world needed a hero. Or at least an anti-hero willing to clean up the mess he sort of technically made. Quit but college to piss off his parents. Has read Dracula <laughs> like all the cool kids. <laughs> the conduits, including the mastermind behind the blast, Kessler. Let's be real. None of Cole's powers are as sick nasty as his parkour <laughs> skills. But yeah. To manipulate electricity is pretty sweet. Traversal. And... Controls electromagnetic energy. Not only can he generate a smorgasbord of powerful lightning attacks, he can also manipulate thermal, kinetic, and gravitational energies. Electromagnetism is pretty broad, after all. This includes his radar pulse, which detects the biological oh, inside organisms even if they're hidden. It looks. I, I knew this yeah. was gonna make me want to play these games again. Yeah. 
It's I, like seeing this alone. I, it oh, looks, I want to play it again now. Yeah, just looking at this alone, I'm just like, yeah, I, I want to play it again. Damn it. I don't know <laughs> if they've been remastered for PS4 or PS5, but... Not that I know of. Damn it. Get on that shit, Insomniac. Powers to his kid. He can throw ice grenades, Oof. shoot ice spikes, and let out some epic ice farts. <laughs> Huh. He can levitate like electric Iron Man, grind on rails like Shadow the Hedgehog, read your mind like Goku's muffin button, charge up with extra karmic energy, Bro. also like Shadow the Hedgehog, and generate force fields like Shadow the Hedgehog. But these aren't just <laughs> force fields. They literally convert any matter they touch into energy that Cole absorbs. That's insane. That's How's cool. That? Are you familiar with a little equation called E equals MC, MC squared. squared? Yeah. No. Oh, well, uh, it defines the mathematical relationship between matter and energy. Essentially, how much energy any given mass contains. Okay, the largest mass object Cole absorbs is a 343-gram helicopter chain gun round. Perfectly converting matter to energy is technically impossible, but hey, this is a video game. The mass contained in that bullet, when multiplied by the speed of light squared, would release an energy equivalent to over 7 megatons of TNT. Hmm. This means Cole's energy output is basically fueled by a nuclear reactor. Oh! So he's like a living super bomb, always ready to go off. Sounds like my first X wave. Should he spend yeah. on energy, he can drain it from nearby appliances to recharge. He's even learned to drain the bioelectricity from people like this. Yikes. Cole can focus his electricity through his amp, a giant tuning fork which lets him ring around the rosy you to death. Or he can just make lightsabers out of his hands. That's cool too. And because he follows Pokemon rules, Cole's extra resistant to electric attacks. With these powers, Cole chewed through Kessler's forces, including Sasha, whose black tar powers could infect and control minds. And he eventually faced down that son of a bitch himself and pwned his ass, despite Kessler <laughs> having his exact same powers. Coincidence? Turns out the architect of Cole's misery was himself from an alternate future timeline. Manipulating events from the shadows to ensure this version of Cole became a better hero than Kessler ever was. Yeah, mm. you see, Cole's superpowers are molded through his actions, increasing in power and utility based on how good or evil he acts. Naturally, as a good person, Cole shaped his powers to be more focused to target the bad guys. That's pussy shit! Evil Cole is way more awesome sus! He blows everything up! Collateral damage? Who cares? He can control fire! <laughs> <laughs> Well, that just happened. Uh, who wrote this shit? <laughs> the point is, Kessler's whole plan was meant to prevent the apocalypse, which would appear in the form of the Beast, a conduit of unimaginable power. Cole is strong enough to create massive thunderstorms, fast enough to route electricity moving at 90% the speed of light, and maybe thanks to Kessler, tough enough to take on the Beast, which possessed the power of the Ray Sphere itself. It could regenerate at an atomic level and eradicate all of Empire City in a single attack. Fortunately, Damn. after a grueling battle, Cole defeated the Beast once and for all. Though ultimately, it wasn't Cole's power that made him a hero. In order to stop a plague created by the Ray Sphere, Cole sacrificed his life, eradicating the Conduit genes and saving all of humanity. Wow. He also killed thousands of Conduits in the process, but hey, what's a few corpses when building a better tomorrow? This trolley stops for no one. Cole was remembered as a saint by the people of Numeray, as a hero by the friends he left behind, and an inspiration to future generations. A true testament to the responsibility of power. So now I'm trying to remember if Infamous Second Son is basically a soft reboot, or if actually the bad path of infamous is the canonical path because there are obviously still conduits there are a lot more of them in second son yeah i would say it, mm. so i'm trying to remember but i can't like it's been too long how that worked yeah but uh, i i also might have been misremembering but i was thinking the beasts was actually like what Cole would become if he stayed on the evil path, essentially. Fresh, America's number one. I do not remember. Meal kit. <clears throat> I can't remember either, if I'm being honest. But I guess we're. I guess from what they said there, I think they're gonna follow the canonical, or like the good ending is the canonical one. I guess we'll see. But anyway. With great power 
comes great responsibility. But not everybody's got an Uncle Ben to tell him that. Alex Mercer woke up in hell. Manhattan Island was gripped by the horrific Black Light virus, mm. transforming its citizens into terrifying monsters. Yeah. Alex had no memories. He was a man without a past and maybe no future, but he did have one thing. The Black Light virus can rewrite your cells <laughs> all the way down to your DNA. And somehow it granted Alex incredible superhuman abilities. He can infect anyone he touches with this virus, altering their biology at the molecular level in seconds and giving him complete control over their actions. So Alex pushed on, desperate to avenge himself and the city by finding whatever monster unleashed this nightmare and eat them. Yeah, he can consume people to give himself a power boost. He's like Kirby, if Kirby listened to Linkin Park. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> no. You're not you're not wrong 100 percent on that, but yeah, that's uh. that was fun. gives him superhuman strength, a greater metabolic rate, increased reaction times, and even a regenerative healing factor. Essentially, Alex is an ever-evolving super being, the ultimate being. Oh, oh, like Shadow the Hedgehog. By consuming <laughs> victims, Alex also receives all their memories and experiences, including Peter Randall, a 69-year-old nice. man whose entire history Alex processed in just 11 seconds. Being able to condense that much information in a single <coughs> frame means Alex can perceive events happening within five nanoseconds. Which is wow. about how long I was married to my second ex-wife. Oh my gosh. <laughs> At will, creating disguises, increasing his muscle mass, and forming nearly unbreakable armor. And when he wants to kill someone, he can become his own weapon turning his limbs into claws and blades, or generating countless tendrils that give him unmatched control over his environment. With these goopy powers, he came up with a bunch of Street Fighter moves, like the Air Dash, the Cannonball, the Bullet Dive Drop, and the Hunter Dirt Nap. Pretty sure that was my third ex-wife's boyfriend's stripper name. And consuming <laughs> enough, Sorry. Hunter Dirt Nap. Alex reaches critical mass and can unleash his evil sloth in powerful ultimate attacks. Like the Tendril Barrage Devastator. Oh, uh, yeah. Dang. Damn. That basically devours everything within a certain radius. Hmm. As one of my favorite abilities. Basically, if you're in the midst of like a, a military uh, military base, and then all of a sudden you reach critical mass, you can clear out a whole section. Uh, hmm. But you know, reaching critical mass takes a lot. Despite being seen as the world's most wanted terrorist. Fair. Alex used his powers to stop the spread of the virus and end the city's nuclear devastation. It was then he learned the truth. He wasn't Alex Mercer at all. He was the black light virus itself, mm -hmm. which absorbed the memories and likeness of the real Alex Mercer, who was not only dead, but actually responsible for all of this in the first place. To decipher this, Ooh. I recreated yep. the black wow. light virus myself, the most dangerous. Uh, why is it empty? He's right behind me, isn't he? So yep. the man Alex was <laughs> hunting the whole time was, was himself. himself. Dun, dun, dun. Hmm. That's right, Boomstick. Turns out Dr. Alex Mercer helped create the Blacklight virus, and when things didn't work out and he was about to die, he recklessly unleashed it upon the city. What a petty SOB. What he didn't know was that the virus would merge with his sentience and memories and become a new Alex. How? Why? Don't question it, it's a nothing burger. But is this massive <laughs> viral material? They never they never clarified it. Actually human in any meaningful way. The poor bastard sure tried to be. Too bad humans can be dicks, and everyone kept betraying him. Even the so-called love of his life, who shot him in the face. Whoa! So Alex figured, uh, obviously, humanity had to go. Not just go, but be made better. Whatever he made goodness him. remaining with this Alex was left behind as he plotted to unleash a second Blacklight virus, recreating humanity into a super species in his own image. Great power became great terror. Classic anime RPG villain stuff. And he was strong enough to do it. Alex can casually tear buildings apart, dodge supersonic tank shells, and even defeated the Supreme Hunter, who was tough enough to survive a nuclear blast that would have leveled Manhattan. Based on the blast hmm. rate he's given in-game, that's 450 kilotons of TNT. Speaking of nukes, Alex survived one. His healing factor is off the chain. And after being blasted into paste, 
All he needed was the tiniest bit of himself to come back good as new. His healing occurs at the cellular level, making him very <coughs> impossible to kill so long as he keeps consuming. But attempting hmm. to take over the world and kill millions of people pissed off a certain James Heller, a dude who had just had enough of his fucking weird fucking rambling shit. <laughs> who used the same virus <laughs> to consume Alex once and for all. Live by yeah. the Kirby symbiote, die by the Kirby symbiote. But was Alex just a virus after all? I mean, what's more human than the urge to conquer the world, drive its species to the slaughter, consume its raw genetic resources, and crown yourself king? Maybe the day Alex Mercer died was the day he truly became human. Wow, hmm. that was intense. F yeah, it was. <laughs> Advertisements. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! All right, Kate. Who you got just from seeing that? I'm having a feeling that it's going to be the Mercer guy. I think it's going to be Alex? Okay. Interesting. Because he can consume anything. Yeah. Although he himself did get consumed later on by Heller, and that's. But, well, both of them met their ends, and Cole's, like, they're going with Cole's, like, canonical good ending, and they're going with Alex Mercer's canonical, like, evil ending. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, you know, it's just like one's more good, one's more evil. And I would say, yeah, I don't know. I I think Cole has some defenses against Alex, but I don't know if it's enough. Yeah, that was my thought, too. Because if Alex's healing factor can bring him back from literally, like, a little bit of genetic material. Right. That, yeah. I don't... I just have a feeling that it's the, guy, the Alex guy, but I could be wrong. So we'll see. Um, uh, who are you? Are you still cold going cold? I actually cold? think it's Alex because he's super overpowered sounding compared to Cole. Yeah, unfortunately. Cole's just an electrical superhero, essentially. And while he does have a lot of power at his disposal, he doesn't seem to be nearly as hard to kill as Alex sounds like he is. Yeah. And I think they're going to give it to Alex based on his healing factor and his uh, um, shit that he survived and stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably. I guess we'll see. So are you voting Alex as well? I'm probably, yeah, I'm going Alex as well. Okay. So, I guess we might as well jump on in, shall so we? I think, if anything, like, if they're going to give Cole, like... <laughs> A fake ending, like he's gonna blow himself up to take out Alex, but then Alex is just gonna regenerate and they're gonna give the win to him, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. they're gonna do everything to kill each other, and Alex will probably re, you know, either that or Alex is just gonna decimate him because he could probably get him just by touching him from the sound of it. Maybe we'll see. Anywho, here we go. Ah, full 3D animation. Oh. Very nice. Hey, Alex. I think I've still got room for dessert. Buddy, you are one sick freak. <laughs> Parkour. All right. Well, this is cannonball. All right. What do you got? Ooh, electricity. And ice. Hmm. 
He just gave him room to feed. Even if Cole loses, this is dope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yet you wasted on these vermin. You and I can change this world for the better. The only vermin I see here is you. Ultimate form. Uh oh. Dive bomb. Oh shit. It's not that easy. Oh shit. Oh shit. This world sure isn't perfect. But it's a lot better without you in it. Damn! Really? Damn! We were all what? wrong! Hell yeah. That's cool. Damn, we were all wrong! Huh. Cole McGrath. I wonder what the their reasoning is gonna be for this. Oh, I don't know. I don't know where that script was in the trash. I had to hear someone say awesome sauce. <laughs> <laughs> the were incredibly versatile and deadly, and both could match each other's powers blow for blow. They could each create weapons, amplify their strength, and fight at range. But could Cole survive Alex's infection? Well, Alex would usually need to weaken an opponent to get that trick to work. Even then, the Ray Sphere incident that created Cole's powers in the first place ripped apart everyone else down to the atomic level. And the Beast's attacks were capable of the same thing. Mm. Considering the Black Light virus only works down to molecular DNA, it's reasonable to say Cole would be able to resist it. Sure, Alex oh. could have potentially consumed Cole's biomass to give himself an edge, but Cole could just do the same thing to Alex, absorbing his bioelectricity to power himself back Oh, up. that's oh. right. Oh, I didn't think about that. Huh. Notably slower as well. Vulnerable to possible corruption, notably slower. Smarter, more experienced, harder to kill due to regeneration. More powerful, better range options could resist the black light virus. Yeah. Hmm. The gap in power. Everything Alex survived could simply not match Cole's force field. And especially not the power of the beast. The blast the beast mm. created actually had a much wider radius than the one the Supreme Hunter could survive. To compete with these foes, this means Cole was simply far more powerful than Alex. Speaking mm. of the beast, Fair enough. I thought it was opposite. The atomic level meant that even Alex's crazy molecular regeneration couldn't stand up to Cole's might. Just like how Cole could overpower Kessler despite his resistance to electricity, or how he resisted Sasha's mind control powers, which were eerily similar to the Black Light virus. But I bet you're wondering, what if Alex fought evil Cole instead? Well, it'd be even worse, because that Cole took the beast's power for himself. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Mm. See, he can basically become a demigod. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't wrong. Opponent. But Cole's counters, speed, and raw power gave him the edge. Alex got the Cole shoulder, just like this stupid script. The winner is Cole McGrath. Hmm. All right. Hell yeah. So Cole That's McGrath cool. wins. The only thing I'll say is a little bit, like, off. The, as far as I remember, I'm not 100% on this. It's just as far as I remember. is I don't believe absorbing someone like a person's bioelectricity is good path coal i, I don't think that it counts is. towards evil path if you absorb people well i think if you absorb people but where you're but absorbing a he, bad guy he can do either and you can actually do that and still be on the good path like as long as you don't I do think, it too often yeah and i think if you do so, it to I guess that's what they're going i think if you do it to like the truly bad people which alex at this point in the story was a very bad person Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. All right, let's see who's next. 
Oh god. Frieza? Frieza versus Megatron? Oh. Oh. That's pretty cool. Cool. Okay. So that one we'll probably definitely have to check out. Yeah. So yeah. There we are, the death battle between Cole McGrath and Alex Mercer. With an outcome that I'm happy with. I mean, this was this was a good death battle. I think they kind of played Cole down a little bit to make it seem like he wasn't going to be the winner whenever they did the... They do that a lot, dance. dude. And I, and like, because I was going in the video being all like, as far as from what I know about the two games, I think Cole probably could be the winner of this. And then after their descriptions, I was like, no, nah, I don't think Cole's got this. But then I was wrong because they kind of just... They in my opinion, it they kind like of they downplayed they, it. Yeah, yeah. they, they hid make him the, seem as strong as he actually is when they were yeah. describing him. Yeah, they hid uh, Cole's like, uh, like what he'd survived with the Beast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the Beast is one of the strongest entities in the game, and what it's capable of, they didn't really talk about what the Beast was capable of. They do that sometimes with these. Hmm. Yeah, so I would say, for, I would say, for all intents and purposes, you know. Cole, like, this is a good death battle, and they did a good job on determining what the outcome was. The well actual done. death battle scene, though, that was epic. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. When they do 3D animation like that, I'm always, like, yeah, John they Yeah, the they did a great job with that. Yeah. Well done, y'all. Well yeah. done. Very well done. So, yeah, Cole McGrath versus Alex Mercer. Infamous versus Prototype death battle. We have a winner, and his name is Cole McGrath. And I guess until next time, everybody, if y'all want to see more uh, from Death Battle, click their name in the title of the video. And until and uh, if you want to see more from us, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, all that fun stuff. So we'll see you in the next one. I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I am Nick. Take care. And this has been Renegades React!